everyone. I am Dee. Welcome back to another episode of Spiritually Speaking. I have another amazing guest with me today. This is Lalitha Donatella Rebat, and she is a Vedic astrologer and life coach, among other things. So welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Dee May. It's a pleasure, and uh, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I'm so happy. <laughs> we have a have had well, quite the free chat, so I'm excited to see where this takes us today. Yes, I'm very excited because you like all the things I adore for for decades. I've loved anything related to consciousness, healing, and uh, the highest potential. The highest potential we all have that we need to start looking into if we st we haven't. So this is the time for a great conversation, I believe, for everyone. It's a great awakening going on. Yes. And even the most conservative teachers now, I'm saying, like the yogis of uh, South India, uh, whom I'm following, you know, since I was a younger person, <laughs> since I was in my 20s. And they are amazing. The yogis, right? They have supernormal powers. And even they are saying there's a great awakening happening now. That they don't talk in terms of frequencies the way we do. But they definitely say we have Satya Yuga now, which is a new cycle. It's a cycle of light. It's a cycle of truth. It's a cycle for returning to the intelligence that has created everything and the universe teeming with life and beings from all these star clusters. So that is their cosmology. And I love it so much. And I know that that can contribute uh, to to what we want to do, even as Westerners, and and reaching our highest goals and our purpose, right? Uh, yeah, and we finding do, uh, our purpose and stepping into that is so important. Yeah, right. so that's it's such it's a beautiful one. thing. It is because it gives meaning. It gives also hope and it gives beyond hope. It gives also tools, practical tools for manifesting and so the yogis don't call it manifesting. They just say, tap into your higher self and just, you know, get to whatever you want. And so <laughs> did Jesus. I don't know if this is the channel to talk about Jesus, but I don't follow Catholicism. You know, although I was born into that religion, uh, my parents weren't religious, but they did believe in benevolent, you know, divine uh, and also, but Jesus was a yogi. He was a very loving being and he's being yes. misinterpreted. I believe. What did he say? Ask for whatever you want. It shall be done for you. Right. But we don't talk about that. what do they tell us in church? I shall not want. That's terrible. It's disempowering and that you're dust. You return to dust. Now we are fully divine, fully empowered. And Jesus told us you can practice uh, miracles. You can manifest what I did even better so to right. me to have being like that that is followed by what a billion people how many people follow uh Christianity I don't know so if we either. start looking into into the real teachings now all of a sudden we start levitating I believe <laughs> because it's about, about what we believe it's about how we perceive ourselves <laughs> I love that that was so great <laughs> It was so great. I was raised very religious. I've I've stated that in in previous podcasts as well. I was raised Pentecostal, which is a very very strict religion. Yes, so, I love it though. Yeah, because it gives you tools to bypass the rational mind. Don't you think with the uh, speaking in tongues, tongue or tongues, mm -hmm. speaking yeah, a kind of what they, we call gibberish, right? Gibberish, gibberish um bypasses the rational mind which is what linear impossibility prone uh prone to negativity it has the negativity bias and and we need to have so many tools because even i go into negativity and i teach don't go into <laughs> negativity and possibility thinking don't go into scarcity thinking but it's a constant work of vigilance i mean we have to be vigilant with the mm -hmm. mind. Yes. I call it the human oh, factor because we, yes. I believe it's that piece of us that, that is so grounded in where we are in this 3D reality that that's the piece of us that drifts back to the old habits of 
living in scarcity and you know and you mentioned the teachings of Jesus and stuff like that and I believe that from what I've seen being raised in a Pentecostal religion where that that is taught you know and is that there's it's taught and it's freely taught it's freely talked about but I don't feel like it's actually believed because yeah it's that's very, the problem it's very automatic you mean I, I don't want to like I don't want to because this comes off as say, sounding judgmental but it's really not it's a lot of there's a lot of unhealthy mm -hmm. behaviors because that they're just they're still so here that they think everything is outside of them they don't yes, really that was not yes you're right you're right yeah. I absolutely absolutely right i was just having that mental conversation with myself today and i thought why is it that catechism was so insipid i went from speaking to angels and jesus on a daily basis since i was five or right. even younger i went to catechism and i was deadly bored and it was because it appealed to the rational mind it's linear they tell you that you cannot understand god because God is the ocean and you are the bucket. No, we are the ocean too. Right. We are fully empowered higher beings who came from the stars. We didn't even originate here. It's just the other way around. So no wonder most people become indifferent you know, to religion, to say the least, if, if they're not traumatized, because some people are really traumatized. Mm -hmm. And I also from a yogic background because I've been studying yogi science for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one day I decided to go back to church and check it out. So I was wearing like a suit. I think it was Easter. I was wearing something nice. You know, it was, I lived in a nice area where everybody dressed up for going to church. <clears throat> so I arrived and the priest said, now, uh, what is it called? Like share your gesture of peace i'm from italy so sometimes I, the terminology is not the same but anyway you know like exchange a, a gesture of peace so i turned that there was a nice old lady like very cute and very sweet and so i smiled and i extended my hand and she was like, mm, like this so i was like i have forgotten that negativity because i was coming from this yogi background where everybody there, there was so much love so much acceptance and so much sweetness and so much idealism on how to help humanity and and how to heal and how also I'm a Reiki master I think you are too and so we wanted to help and heal and embrace humanity and here we have somebody who doesn't even like to shake shake hands right. and I thought oh my goodness I cannot deal with this much negativity anymore so she helped me that I never went back <laughs> it was a with myself and I thought okay this is not for me not anymore that's it yeah <laughs> and I never like really yeah it was funny though and so I can see how people become traumatized you know they're told you're a sinner you'll die you'll go back to the dirt from whence you came and and maybe you'll be saved if you deserve it or most likely you'll go to hell so who needs that right. because life can be difficult already for many people and we don't need to hear these messages anymore. That's it. I, I, as much as I, and I know that I read, I wrote it in my book. Did, may I talk a little bit about my book? Yes, because I please. believe it's relevant. Yes. So my book is launching today and tomorrow. And actually the 22nd is the official launch. So it's called Think and Receive Miracles. So I've talked also about a little bit about Jesus, but mostly about the higher beings who are here now on the earth plane. From my research and studies, I discovered that we are in this time called the golden age or Satya Yuga. Satya Yuga is the um, Sanskrit term. And there are all these higher beings who have returned. And, and it's in all the scriptures. Um, Krishna said that return. Jesus said that return. Um, in the uh, literature of the star beings and ETs, etc. all these higher councils coming back. So it's really um, global. <laughs> it's called yes. global from the point of the earth plane. 
but it's a cosmolo cosmological change, right? So now we have all this higher energy on the earth plane and depending on what we do with it, we are either empowered or we remain stuck in mm -hmm. things that we don't like. And, and maybe some people are having a wonderful life so they don't need to hear our conversation. You know, like <laughs> our, there are those who really want something more, they want more meaning and more yes. happiness, affluence, ease, peace, joy, going to the places where they feel called to go. Uh, like you want to go to uh, Polynesia, why not? You should be able to go tomorrow or right. today, right? Spontaneously. So the other thing about um, the book I wanted to say, so I talked about my experiences with higher beings my whole life. And it started at five. And particularly some star groups like from Lyra, um, I don't remember most of it, but what I remember to me is like what I hear from other people. Oh, I've had experiences with this star group and I've had experiences with these other star groups. So it's a great conversation, I believe, that we can have now because the help is available. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was, it's very timely to, for us to start talking about this because we're cosmic beings. We're not just earth beings. Right. And we're multidimensional, right? Do you believe that too? I do, yes. I do believe yes. that. It's it's so interesting too. And I, I love these conversations because I am very open to these things. And I've had my own experiences with stuff like this, like we talked about previously. And some of the stories that I've, you know, experienced, I, I still haven't shared. And, you know, I yeah. will eventually you know when it's when the time's right for those but i know we're in a period of disclosure right now because some of the people that i follow um like yes. danny henderson i don't know if you've heard of her she's one of the people that i follow and she puts on this will be i think it's the third year that she has put on what's called the galactic spiritual informers connection and it's a big event that happens and this year it's going to be in Colorado in a little town just outside of um Denver so are you going uh, my you plan going? is to go I haven't bought my tickets yet but my plan is to go so um because I I really feel like I need to be there I feel like something special is going to happen yeah. while if I'm you there, feel so. cold by all means you should be there in fact yeah. you're already there Yes, <laughs> we found out that that time doesn't even exist, right? right? Also, the universe doesn't exist. Scientists um, in 2022 proved beyond any shred of doubt that we don't even have a physical universe. It doesn't exist as a locality. So then we make our own environment. We decide, and it's really our idealism, our goals, our um, desires that create everything mm -hmm. for good or for worse right that's why we need to be very cautious about what we think and especially about what we speak yes so I believe that um, we create as we go I'll give you an example of how that works so without any publicity and organically my book reached sixth um, on Amazon best-selling list and I, I was ahead of Eckhart Tolle. I don't know if you're familiar with the power of now. So I was ahead of him and ahead of uh, Jay Shetty, who is a you know big name in marketing. No, Jay Shetty yes, too. <laughs> so I was ahead of these incredible guys, right? But what did I look at? I looked, oh, there's this guy who is a best -sell, uh, New York Times bestselling author. He was ahead of me like two spots up. Maybe I was six and he was fourth. And I thought, what chances do I have? He has 35,000 or, or 2,500 uh, reviews. And I had four. So I was starting to compare and start feeling very negative about this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, it's not, that's not how it works. And then I fortunately, I have a fantastic publisher, Katie Carey. I don't know if you're not familiar with her. And she said, what are you talking about? This, you're ahead of Eckhart Tolle. You're ahead of Jay Shetty. Why are you looking at that? It all depends on how many uh, copies are sold today. So I thought, oh, my goodness, I didn't even know that. I was looking at, from a negativity bias right. standpoint, right? 
So I am the one, I'm a teacher, even I need to be super careful now, I understand. It was very humbling and a great reminder how we, we create as we go. And then from that moment on, I thought, no, it's really in the, the hands of the divine. If this is a great um, book for everyone, it will go as high as it can go. So I don't have right. to worry about that. And in fact, can you please tell your audience to buy it as soon, like today or tomorrow, the latest? It would be great. To, it would be great help because I don't have a million dollar marketing team like, like the New York Times or et cetera. It's just me and uh, my publishing company and and just organically you know telling people uh this book you may like it's about uh me meeting with this tall blonde being when i was a child and then continue to have hints like from my mother she also met the, another tall gorgeous blonde person who seemed not of this world but, and talked to her it's in perfect italian she was in italy my mother um, lived near milan and then, um, and then, like uh, all these messages and, and events that have been happening, I believe are connected with star beings. And there are angelic beings, some of them, and some are just very much like us. Some are good and some are bad, but there are all kinds. And they are in contact with us telepathically, or sometimes they actually show up. Yes. Like in the book, I can disclose a little bit, like a friend of mine who lives in France, she is a Parisian. And one day after reading this beautiful book on extraterrestrials, she thought, I want to meet them. I'm ready. And but she didn't know what she was asking for. Right. So the next day she was on the subway in Paris and she was sitting and she saw this gorgeous, amazingly looking man. He was maybe in his early 30s, well, maybe late 20s, early 30s. And he was so elegant. And do you know how in Paris people dress very nicely sometimes? And she was looking at him and, saw, and she thought, oh, he looks extraterrestrial. But she didn't think much of it. And he sat next to her, even though there were a lot of empty seats. And at that time, she started getting a little rigid. I thought, is this really an extraterrestrial? And then he said to her, if you don't hurry, you'll miss your stop. And, and mentioned the name of the station where she was going. Say, I don't know, Montmartre. <laughs> you'll miss Montmartre if you don't hurry. So he was telepathic. <laughs> and then she was... She was trying to sit in a little bit away from him. And then she started thinking, okay, I want to go to this health event. It, it was like a huge conference. So they called it Health Salon. And uh, she was thinking, should I go to this or that? And they were on opposite sides of the city. So she was wondering in her mind. And he said, I think you should go to this one, actually. She wasn't looking at a map or anything. She was just thinking. And he said, I think you should go to that health salon. It's much better. And you love it. And then she freaked out. And then she got <laughs> up, ran out at the first stop. <laughs> and then when she came down, she said, wait a minute. I asked for, the, or the, for this. Yeah. Clearly it's telepathic. It's tall, blonde and gorgeous and, and dressed so beautifully. Of course. And then she came down and she was very grateful. And I had yeah. a similar experience. That's and amazing. I talked about it. Yes, it's all about what we are ready for, right? Some people, mm -hmm. it's not for everybody. Some people may not be ready and they even call us crazy. It doesn't matter. <laughs> when you're ready, you, you'll have the experiences you need for your growth and um, and also for the things you need to do in life. Like what? Like believing that there's more than just flesh and blood and and that actually there's so much more that the... the our life can offer, right? And that we mm -hmm. can offer so much more to others. We yes. can heal and inspire and, and do great work and be creative and productive. Yeah. I would like to hear your, your all of that. All of that. Yeah. Amazing. All of that. It's a and it's amazing to me. The only thing that limits us is ourselves. You know, our thoughts that we can't do it, that we won't be able to do it. I don't even use the word can't anymore because I don't believe it. You know, you can do it. I don't, we can do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. In my first book, I said, it was strictly yogic and about supernormal powers. I gave so many examples of how when you think you can, you can do nearly the impossible. 
and and also a lot of um, accounts of you know other people, clients or students, family members. Uh, and really, it's all up to us. The work has to be done inwardly. Yes, there's no other way to go. You can take the course, you can take, you can sign up for the coaching class and all classes, but it's all up to you and what you want to believe, right? Yeah. They'll be skeptics who have another belief system, which is even more radical than <laughs> the, <laughs> the fundamentalists today are those who call themselves skeptics. So they are not ready to uh, see anything else beyond their flesh and blood. So, right. and the limited eye, birds have better eyes than we do. Oh yeah. Too. Animals are op so open and, and so are children. We were talking about that in our pre-chat before we started recording that children and you, you said your experiences with this type of stuff started when you were very young, you named an age, but I, I was around that same age when I, first I started seeing the spirit. Right. Sorry, say that again. How I was you? around the same age, five, when I first yeah. remember seeing spirit for the first time. However, I believe that I did previously. I just don't remember it, you know, because I. Exactly. I've... Why is everybody talking about age five? I believe that something happens to our neocortex at that age, or maybe the frontal lobe, that even though we're used to all these experiences and living on multiple dimensions, you know, we're multi multidimensional from the birth. Um, I believe that we take it for granted. And then at five, we become more self-aware and we remember. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we um, talk to other people. My childhood was different because my parents were very busy working all the time. So I didn't get a lot of attention, um, which was in a way a blessing for, for a spiritual uh, child. Because nobody told me you're crazy. That's not true, etc. I never told anything. I'm t I last night I didn't say I talked to the angels, or I saw this tall blonde being in my room. You know, I, anybody, maybe another a parent who pays attention is freaked out and says, "No, you shouldn't believe in these things." Right. And maybe a parent who is an atheist will say, "No, there's no such a thing. You imagined, and you know, you, you have imaginary friends or things like that." Yes, I was very open when my son told me there is Michael on the tree. I believe it was Archangel Michael. And I said, what does he look like? I didn't say you're crazy. I said, what does he look like? I want right. to see him. And he said, he's like a beautiful, he didn't say beautiful. He said, a little boy. Do you see his blonde curls? And I said, no, I don't see him. <laughs> I was honest with him, but uh, right. he didn't. I didn't dissuade him in any way. I just. Right. Okay, a friend is not Michael. Yeah, that's you can so talk cool to him. That, that he saw him he as three. a little boy. Was three years old. Three. Yes, and he was a little. He was three, so perhaps he is. And in fact, he has forgotten because when he was having this conversation with me, he wasn't five or six. You know that age when you remember. When I told him, it he had no recollection of all that. And in fact, they asked me questions and, you know, now it's 30 something. And it's like, no, I don't remember now. <laughs> and yeah. even maybe at 12, I tried to tell him and he had already forgotten. And that's very sad because yeah. these are important experiences we have. And I believe that we should um, keep records, right? Yeah. Our family should help each other to keep records of these beautiful events that really mark the growth of an individual. Mm -hmm. right because yeah. somewhere in he just has forgotten yeah and I told you about an experience I had when I was little that I don't remember but my mom told me about where I had an imaginary friend that was a purple horse you know <laughs> and I, I would love to be able to remember that but I I do not I do not remember having a purple horse friend when I was little you went on another planet right because yeah. horses are all not purple on earth but on <laughs> other planets of course right they may be all or yellow even right yeah definitely and yeah. you know what's interesting i'm a writer also and um yeah. i was really into the movie scene for a while i had some made some friends in indiana when i worked there or when i lived there rather 
and uh well i worked there too but at any rate <laughs> they were in the um, yeah. independent yeah. film scene where they made independent movies and i was involved in that scene for a while where i was in actually in some movies and i was thought i'm going to be a screenwriter and so i actually wrote a screenplay where my purple horse from my childhood is one of the characters in in that movie and of course it's still sitting in my in my computer i haven't oh, done anything no. with it but oh no uh, you should we need these kind of it's fully we need these kind of movies. yes please take out of your um uh works full of light full of inspiration we need that yeah it would be fun you know if 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 it's meant to come to be into a movie it'll happen i'll come across the right person that i'll talk to about it and and it'll definitely. it'll happen when you're, ready, when you're ready it will happen right definitely exactly we have seen enough darkness. i believe the uh, entertainment industry needs an uplifting uh job i believe it's full of darkness most of it yeah it's very hard for me to find something inspirational that's why most of the time i just watch um either something to do with um the ramayana uh, the Bhagavad Gita, you know, all these uh, higher, this where cosmology is, is way more inspirational, uh, inspiring than what we have, you know, like your flesh and blood came out of nothing from a monkey. And then, <laughs> and, and we all started this 6,000 years ago. It's kind of boring and untrue, but in my belief. Yeah, yeah. My no, I agree with you. I was actually just listening to Greg Braid, and I don't know if you know who he is. Yes, of course, I know and, Greg Braid. And, yeah, and I was just let me, let me see what the name of this is real quick. It's called uh, the <laughs> the controversial genome chromosome TBR two. Oh yes, yes. and he's actually talking <laughs> yes. about how we, you know. It's very scientific, and he goes into all of this, and it's absolutely fascinating. It doesn't match. It doesn't match hominids. It doesn't match monkeys or gorillas. It doesn't match anything. We yeah. just appeared like, and uh, and so that's very much like uh, what the yogi said, mm -hmm. right? We came from um, other uh, planes of existence, um, and also like. I really believe in what people remember and or they can intuit because they have these faculties and they're superior, I believe, to the linear mind, you know, yes. this from A and ends up at Z. <laughs> and uh, for example, I love the story of this uh, Swami in Kauai, in Hawaii. Um, he was a Hindu Swami, a Westerner originally, but he spent his whole life in meditation. And he was channeling this being from the Pleiades star cluster, Muruga, who is a Hindu god. But God is a higher cosmic being, right? In his light. But I believe he was also, he also had a three dimensional uh, body because that's what we say in, in Vedic astrology. We um, we talk about the planets as beings who also have a body. Um, so there's all there's consciousness and they're alive. And Greg Braden said the same thing. He said the stars are alive, they're conscious, and also they choose their paths. And that's what Vedic astrology says. And of course, the sun, same thing. And all the planets in our galaxy are alive. They're beings and they're full of life. So how can we say, maybe we'll find some cells or some water. No, there, on Mars, we had water according to Vedic astrology. Venus is a water planet. So we know that there is so much more than we're told. And maybe their life is underground. It doesn't matter to me. But there are beings everywhere. Every planet is inhabited according to the yogis and also according to what I heard and observed and also uh, I like to follow people who have had experiences right because we're all in this together and we need to tell each other stories I believe yeah we we do definitely but you know like I said in my well I shouldn't say but and when we do share those stories we need to tell them how we remember them and not embellish them and add to them oh, yeah. all of the stuff. That... Uh, integrity, integrity is important. Yes. yes. Otherwise, we're just 
eating each other. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I was very accurate in my book to the point that some people can say, oh, you imagined it all. So what? Einstein said imagination is more important than, what did he say, the intellect? Something like that. But actually, I was very accurate. This is what I remember. Right. Um, also, like I know from studies on children that uh, my um, experiences were authentic because children can see with their eyes closed, so, uh, double blindfold, they can read perfectly. Um, in India, they've done some studies that um, little children can take a note, like this is from Mother's Day, but anyway, they touch double blindfold and touching, they can read perfectly. A newspaper, a banknote, a, a letter, anything. And so their their third eye is fully open. Mm -hmm. That's before puberty. And then I believe that hormonal changes and also the environment and you know what we believe collectively has a huge influence on our children. But other than that, we we can use our higher high, higher gifts. They yes. are inborn. Unless they we are. block them. Right. Great job and of block. <laughs> that's it. We and we do it. We do it. And we're taught to do that by society a lot because they're afraid of yes, you know what, is a problem. Yeah. yeah. But Have you, you know, had the experience that you call someone who says I was just thinking about you and yeah. and uh and actually, they're almost spooked out. They're like, this is funny. This is spooky. Why? This is normal. Right. Like, sometimes, oh, and I remember the way, like, it happened with my husband when we were just dating, you know, courting time. So, for some time, I didn't want to talk to him. He had said something that was upsetting to me. So, it was just, he made a mistake. So, I didn't want to talk to him. But one day, at that time, we had the dial. As yes. I was in a conversation with a friend, we were having lunch and I didn't tell her anything. I just got up and went to dial my boyfriend's number. And he answered, I don't believe this. And I said, what? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And he went on and on. I, was, I said, what's going on? And he said, I was just looking at your photo and I wanted to call you. <laughs> and that's a way they married me that's <laughs> because so then cool. we stayed I lived in Rome I went back to Rome and then he came and we became engaged in Rome and and then after we got married I moved to Chicago so that's a long story <laughs> and now we have two children that's so awesome. that's one some people are really scared and I have never been scared because I feel that if we have any intuition it's a gift as Einstein said it's a divine gift, sacred gift, he called it. And also it protects us. It's like, do you turn left or right? If you turn left, you have a problem. If you go to the right, you're safe and, and you go home happily ever after. So right. it's that simple. So we need to have our intuition. We need to teach our children to value it. I always have, I've always told my children, intuition, trust your your intuition trust your heart you know like be safe if somebody feels unsafe trust it if that situation is not right for you trust it if that thing feels amazing you want to do it then go ahead so I always try to empower them I even told them hey guys you don't need to get sick you know that the age when children are like nine ten so they're two years apart so they were like some days, uh, mom, my stomach hurts. I don't want to go to school. So I told them, okay, you don't need to get sick. All you need to do is ask me for a day off. Because we adults do that. Right. Some days we just don't need to go to work. And we feel miserable if we go to work. So we need some rest. And I told them, you can take a day off here, you know, some time. But don't abuse it. Right. Occasionally you can take they never got sick that uh, winter. All their friends were home with the flu, the strep throats, you know, uh, ear infections, all the usual. And they never got sick. And only twice they asked me for a day off. One of my sons, who is not, wasn't such a big student, he didn't like to study, but he was bright, uh, asked for two days off. 
And the other one only asked for one in the whole school year. So they didn't abuse it. They never got sick. It's a win-win. Yeah. We need to empower children and not just follow the, you know, the linear path. Yes, yeah. you go to school, buy, get your antibiotics. Not that that's wrong if it's needed, right? But there's more. There are other ways for healing and preventing uh, troubles and also, you can empower yourself because you feel, wow, it worked. <laughs> and now you you trust yourself more, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's a lot like what you said earlier, what we say, you know, if we expect that, if we're saying, you know, I always get this this time of year, well, it's that time of year again, you yes. know, and people you tell know. me it. <laughs> last year in May, on May 3rd, I got this disease and they and it becomes a trauma of some kind that needs healing and letting go. Don't believe it. Don't believe that that's what's going to happen to you every May, every spring, spring allergies. Yeah. It's not that the body doesn't get attacked by all kinds of poisons. You know, so it can happen. But the two, two planet, we're, we're in for some trouble. I think we should stop thinking that way. And we're all prone to that, right? Oh, yeah, I have allergies. My nose is itching. Oh, this and that, et cetera. But yeah, it's very important what we speak. This is what I found out. My teacher talks a lot about that because God created with a word and he's Indian. He's a yogi. So he doesn't need to believe in Christianity or Bible. And yet he's, he knows that truth. What do mm -hmm. the yogis do? They strike to the highest wisdom. And they don't make it dogmatic. They don't make it a doctrine. They are runaway rebels. They don't even follow Hinduism. They just have a lot of knowledge right. and supernormal power when they're real yogis. I'm not talking about the delusional ones, you know, those who sit all day, do nothing. But um, I'm talking about the real um, scientists of consciousness. So what did he say? So Dr. Pillai my mentor and he said god created with the word the word is sound waves right frequencies yes we frequency if you turn an egg i forget what of a, a frog into a salamander with different frequencies like life is itself is sounds and frequencies the string theories the string theory so all that should tell us, watch your words. I always tell my children, every word matters. Yes. Every word. When they say something self-deprecating in some country, in some countries, it's elegant. It's being well-bred, well-brought up. You know, they grew up with privilege. If you call yourself an idiot every five minutes. No, that's not true. Right. In fact, it's very abusive, self-abusive. Because um, like in England, for example, somebody told me, no, in, in my country, you have to pretend to be a little stupid. Otherwise you sound like a know-it-all and it's rude. And I said, well, be careful what you want to manifest. Right. <laughs> right. You might at just turn the, into an idiot. At the end, <laughs> if at the end of the day, uh, you rather, you know, avoid looking like a know-it-all. First of all, we're supposed to be fully omniscient because that's what we are. Right. When are we that way? When we dream, so we are not into the monkey mind, or um, when we are in a higher state of meditation, or also when we receive higher energy empowerment, you know, energy transmission from these higher beings, or like uh, um, really enlightened masters. There are not that many, unfortunately. When you have a, an energy transmission, your body will know it. You'll have a Kundalini experience, like the spinal co column will shake and you'll be in a state of ecstasy, right? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And it's and it's so cool when it happens when you like, you least expect it, right? Like I was talking to a, a friend of mine the other day, Kat, she's an artist. She makes beautiful dream catchers and we are going to do a barter where I make her a piece of art and she's going to make me one of her beautiful dream catchers in a way that um, I showed her what I want. So, um, and she was talking about the beads and, 
everything. And she goes, now, do you want to bead on the inside, like on the web part of it? Or do you just want the spider? I had not mentioned spider to her. We I had not no talked idea. about yeah. spider. That morning when I was listening to a lady that on YouTube that I like to listen to who does um, tarot readings, she did an impromptu bonus collective reading, not even for a certain sign, but she was, and she goes, oh, she drew this card and she said, it's spider energy. Huh. And, <laughs> and she said, and then she goes into this explanation about how spider energy is creative energy. And when a spider doesn't like where its web is, it will take it down and rebuild it somewhere else. Or if it's tattered, it'll tear it down and it'll rebuild it. It's that creation energy, that creation energy. That's okay. And, I didn't know that. And she mentioned yeah. that spider and it was, and I started laughing. I said, that's so funny. I said, that's amazing. Thank you. And I told her that story about what the, her, the lady's name is Julie Poole, who did that reading. And she's, I love listening to her. She's a British lady. She's just beautiful. And uh, I told her that story about, I was listening to that that morning. And I said, that is so amazing. Like, I love it. I'm never surprised by spirit, but I'm always amazed. It's just so incredible to me how it happens, you know? And, and I told her, I said, here's what I want you to do. I said, while you're making my dream catcher, what I want you to do is listen to your soul. Oh. That's what I want you to put in there. Whatever your soul tells you to do. So I am so excited when she's finished, right? Pardon me. Like you told her, follow your soul, your intuition, your yes. higher family, your higher gifts. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. We should honor each other's gifts. That's number one. Yeah. But we also have to choose our community because you cannot have the same conversation with everybody. Right. Right. Yeah, you can't. And and you don't have to feel like you have to. That's the thing. And there's you know? no need to. There's no I, need to. Exactly. Yeah. I remember uh, years ago when uh, when I was talking to a friend of mine, she felt like she was being inauthentic if she didn't tell everyone her beliefs. And oh. I said, you're not being inauthentic. You're not, you're not <laughs> believing that. You're not saying you don't believe that. You're just not talking about it. You have to pick your audience sometimes with the words you say. Oh, yes. I've been in, I got in trouble. I wrote about it in my other book, Bliss Lab. I went to a dinner party um, in New York City and there were children, um, sorry, a friend of mine was like, we were friends for like, since we were young, very little. And still, she was a skeptic, like really doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in anything. So to give, she would just like grilled me at dinner. And she said, so give us an example. You know, you lived in India for five years. Give us an example of your miracles that you talk about, you know, in your books, etc." And I said, well, for like, to give you a practical example, I said, I had a terrible cough when I was in India. And I went to my guru and I said Babaji I have this terrible cough and he just looked at me and my cough disappeared for six months I didn't cough and then goes what happened the dark forces <laughs> got involved because I'm you're not supposed to have these conversations and become vulnerable with people look at you like this um <laughs> so I felt very intimidated and very stressed out so I took a piece of cracker from my little plate and I I just took a little piece and I started coughing, you know, because do you know how dry um, yes. crackers can do that? Everybody started laughing, like 20 people laughing at you. And I, all of a sudden you're like completely deflated, completely defeated. And I feel, oh my God, why did I say that? <laughs> and of course, so that was an awkward moment to say the least. And then I realized, no, you're not supposed to have these conversations. Plus, like even your own gifts. Like the yogis say, if you have a power, you have to hide it. What are they implying? Because most of the time we become vulnerable with our own people. Mm -hmm. If that person is, um, okay, now we see very mainstream people, we seem very mainstream, who come out of the closet and turn out to be psychics, 
you know, uh, astrologers and whatever, and so many other things. But in general, if somebody is just a computer engineer and doesn't believe in anything, just don't go and trouble him or her and just let it go. Don't have to have the conversation. Right. However, I'm a Vedic astrologer and Vedic astrology is followed by a lot of scientists. So that's the amazing part that I've done master classes with Oxford scientists, with people, all these engineers of all kinds and, and researchers and scientists of, from you know top schools, Harvard, Yale, like amazing brains, and they all love Vedic astrology. And in India, it's considered a science. So the collective is important. So in India, um, the Supreme Court said Vedic astrology is a science. It works like computer science, period. That's it. Now you get a PhD. So the university grants commission also contributed to that and, and gives grants. So because of that, the conversation is very different. Like in the US, sometimes people say, says to me, you know, say to me, uh, well, not everybody believes in astrology. It's not a belief system unless you, you know, if you look into it, like everything else, if you study it, if you look into it, you may find something. So being a skeptic, I believe, without looking into things is self-defeating. Mm -hmm. And we miss a lot of opportunities because I use the timings. For example, when we first started talking on the computer, I was late and I was so embarrassed. And then I realized, oh my goodness, actually it's better because it was the time of what we call of Rahu. It's a lunar node that is very inauspicious and starting things at that time is better not doing them at all because it will backfire or it will be um, useless basically. And we started at 9.15 actually with the podcast and uh, and now I know it was done in an auspicious time because earlier it would have been bad. Like it's that precise. So it's like choosing a frequency or the weather. Mm -hmm. So you see it's like, okay, now you can go hiking and you love it. And you, you know, maybe you go swimming in the river. You'll have a great time. But if it's thundering and it's all, the sky's all black, and it's chilly. Why do you want to go swimming? It's right. it's simple as that. And Greg Brad Braden also explains that very as a scientist. He explains it very well. Yeah. That's why I love these higher sciences. They got lost, forgotten. We became very skeptical, very manipulated also. Mm. Because I've I was an intellectual too, you know. Like don't think I was just all crystals and uh, higher frequencies. <laughs> I was studying literature and uh, yeah. and most of literature that we study in Europe is very dark. I also studied philosophy since a young age, like at, at 11, I started to study philosophy. That's how it's done in our, our high school when it's for humanities. So like, it was negative. Yeah. People were talking about the problem of God the problem of metaphysics and they never agreed with each other. And I got very depressed because I thought nobody knows anything. And then <laughs> why do I have to study this? And I got depressed from literature because these, the people who wrote were at their own vices. They mm. had the you know, they were alcoholics and they had strange uh, sexual habits. Uh, for me uh, as a teenager, I wasn't ready to even want to know, you know, I didn't care. <laughs> so right. everything so we learn so many things that don't help us in life so I don't know if that's coincidental you know it happens like that by chance or if it's done on purpose to steal some of our consciousness and powers so yeah we need to be I, I think it's it's a really interesting thing to think about because you know like I had the conversation with someone, it may have been Jill, I'm not sure, but at any rate, how in the in the um, old series Charmed, there was a movie about three witches, and there's this force behind the scenes, it's almost like the uh, spirits come in mm -hmm. and they create havoc, like they whisper in your ear, 
and they tell you, you know, like to be mad at the person you're talking to. And then all of a sudden there's this scene where they go around doing that. And then all of a sudden everybody's fighting with each other. Cars are crashing and people are arguing in the street. And because these entities, and that's what they draw their power from is the, the anger and the hate that they and create the between people yeah. and the fear. Yeah, absolutely. So it is yes, a very interesting thing to think about. Fighting and they want us heartbroken. They want those relationships to end bitterly. And yeah, so there is a lot of manipulation. There's no doubt. That's yeah. why we need to be super vigilant. And the yogis talk in terms of dark forces. What, what are dark forces? Forces that have not evolved. And also it's part of the divine design, which I believe um, the interaction of good and bad helps our evolution but it's very painful and you have to protect yourself mm -hmm. and uh, that's why there are, science, there are scientific guidelines we have in vedic astrology okay don't use these days these times are inauspicious don't start anything it won't work i have tested it there is one lunar phase called the ninth moon and it's ruled by an archetype called yama is the god of death but it's also like a being of righteousness because what is death <laughs> the way we perceive it it's uh, the 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 equalizer <laughs> everybody is you know to leave the body even jesus said this corruption will not inherit the kingdom we our soul has every power and is eternal but this right. not so much. so there's this archetype called yama and when you start something during the ninth moon, it will die. What does that mean? That it won't work. You have to redo it. So, and I've tested it sometimes, like for a podcast, somebody said, I have this spot. Would you like to do it? And I said, it's the ninth moon. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Crazy stuff happened. Like I did a podcast in Italy, a beautiful channel that's very popular. So I did this podcast and there were no live viewers. There were maybe five people. And that's very unusual because it's a very popular channel. And then we found out that this big shot, you know, like a big name, say like Eckhart Tolle, somebody like that, the equivalent in Italian, in Italy, was doing his live at the same time. And they all went there. And when right. they reposted it, because it had not been advertised, Basically, I had the lowest views that that channel has ever had. Or similarly, the the um, eclipses. We are gaslighting so much in the West because people like to say cool things about eclipses. No, it's not bad. No, we can meditate. We can hold hands. No, we can't. It's literally very self-destructive. Number one, there are radiations from the sun and the moon during the eclipse, because the eclipse always happens when the sun and the moon are together. <clears throat> they are, so it's a solar eclipse. So it's a new moon, right? So the sun and the moon are interacting and creating terrible radiations, which are dangerous for the body. In fact, in India, in the Vedic uh, circles, um, children are not allowed to go outside during a solar eclipse and also pregnant women and elderly because it's very harmful. And also the level of consciousness we're taking in all this darkness, which is used by dark forces to mess with humanity and to cause mm. problems. And some people who don't like God, I don't want to talk about it, but they have a different religion. They use the eclipses to do harmful things to benefit themselves mm. and hurt so there's really something into this. And uh, so why start something during an eclipse? Also, the lunar eclipses are on the full moon. So they're not as uh, dangerous. Still, it's radiations. It doesn't upset the, the digestion as much. Um, it's not as harmful physically. And it's not as harmful at the level of consciousness, but it's still an eclipse. And... There are some lunar faces that are used by dark people with bad agendas. 
they are more spiritual than we are because what we are innocent and we're skeptical oh, we look into things and we try and evaluate research etc and use our intellect they know they grow up since they're children they have acquired a lot of power and money by having these secrets right and they don't question them they just keep doing this stuff over and over again and it works it worked better before Satya Yuga. Now we're entering this time of awakening. So the dark agendas are not working as well as they used to. That's and good. now who will be rewarded? So even my mentor who is a Siddha from South India, he said from now on, spiritual people will be rewarded. Well, my book is proving that. It's at the top organically without any publicity. That's but awesome. now I need to do a little publicity. Please buy my book. <laughs> Think <laughs> <and> see. <laughs> so do it needs you, to be bought in the state. Do you need to though? Or is that just a construct that you've created in your mind? Well, I do want to because I feel that it has a lot of value that people can really empower themselves with this book. I don't just tell stories. I give a lot of help. Um, I've right. studied um, like 30 years and with great masters and I, I have a lot of tools that can really empower us fast and we need to use this time fast right. because what we also have some risks that we, you know, world war, we either wake up fast or we get in a lot of troubles pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And they may even be birds, different frequencies where some people are ascending and evolving and another group who will just remain on the earth plane and experience what? The wars. I mean, look what happened with Iran and Israel just a few days ago. Every other day we risk a world war because now all these alliances are coming out. That So we need to make really some choices really fast. So it's not for just for my ego. Yeah, of course, I'm pl uh, pleased if my book gets number sure. one. Sure, but it always feels like good. More it feels excellent, but uh, but it's not just for me. That's not why I'm doing this. I could make right. a lot more money. I was an executive in PR. I worked for the Italian consulate. I was the second person in 11 states in cultural affairs. I've done a lot of other things, but to me, they were not as impactful, you know, right. for my, and also I didn't enjoy them as much. So I've tried other things, but I know what works. I have huh. tested it. <laughs> Thousands of times. So, yeah, I'm saying that this book can really be positive to show us that we're really uh, cosmic beings with a lot of power and that we need to use these tools that are available and also connect with higher beings. They really want to help us. They do. And Even we have just, to ask, right? Do you agree that we have to ask them for their help? To ask, we need to ask because free will is right. a universal law. Yes. It exists in every galaxy, and that's also what the yogis say. So we need to ask, and um, we need to open up also, and there are scientific ways to connect with higher beings. In the Vedic system, it's very safe, because every uh, planet is um, is um, ruled, you know, or is connected with a certain archetype, or sometimes two or three archetypes. So you have all these beings with certain names that so they are comfortable for us. But also we can think in terms of, okay, we have brothers and sisters from other stars and we need to make sure they're the good ones, you know, because some may, may not be so benevolent. So I'm, we like, always I have, have goosebumps so bad right now. Oh my gosh, yeah. my eyes are tearing up. Oh, um, that means that you know this. Yes. <laughs> I already know this. So you mentioned that, you know, people will stay behind on the earth plane. And I know this is a real topic of conversation in, in the collective right now uh, that are, that are more open to this, this conversation anyway. Um, do you believe that it's going to be like a movement from one earth to another earth and then one earth will be left behind? Or do you feel like that's a state of consciousness? I believe that from what I've studied and you know what I've learned and what resonates with me, I think there will be waves of ascension. Some people who were born with the consciousness, yes, so there are a lot of cosmic higher 
cosmic beings. Yes, uh, they are comfortable talking about the divine. They already know that they are divine, at least intellectually they know. Because the moment we become aware of we are God, we are not even in the physical body. The energy will be so powerful, will we'll turn into light. So we're not there yet, <laughs> if right. we're still here in this country. But we're, so many people are born with a consciousness. And just even by being silent, going to a dinner party, but you're silent, you're still raising the frequencies. And the earth plane is very happy that you exist. Because the earth plane is a living being who has suffered a lot. And yes. in fact, in the Vedic scriptures, there's the Ramayana, you see the earth plane, the earth goddess, Bhumi, asking Vishnu, a higher being with blue skin, hello, Arcturians, right? Asking, come and help me. These uh, demons are destroying me. And they are causing so much pain. And they're killing humans. They're eating humans. And very similar to what still happens, believe it or not. People will laugh, but that's okay. You know, just look into it and do your own research. Yeah. So uh, the earth plane is alive and asks for help, but the help doesn't come until the sun, the sun, the light, right? The life force on the earth plane it is evolving. So there are periods of darkness we were in a very dark times the last five, 6,000 years. So we have records in the Vedic background. It's not a religion for me. The Vedas are not religious. Hinduism is, but that's made man-made. Right. Like um, Christianity, Jesus didn't create Christianity and Buddha didn't create Buddhism. Right. So the, the Vedas say what? That um, there are cycles, everything is cyclical cyclical um so the sun brings all this light during satya yuga and enters a part of the galaxy where the consciousness is raised so even if you've never thought about the divine you will perceive yourself differently so i believe to a certain extent everyone is ascending yeah. to a higher consciousness however those who are ready who have meditated for hundreds of years or thousands of years, you know, uh, some summarizing, oh, you've done it, you know, you, people, we have all come here or on other planets at least, uh, maybe even a million times, millions of lives of all kinds. So we have experienced a lot. And some of us are ready. And I personally am interested in that path called the light body. Mm -hmm. Maybe extreme people uh, but i believe that we're not flesh and blood and i keep saying i don't want to come back on the earth plane right. i just am ready for something else yes being there Me too. <laughs> the best things i've done on earth were very fulfilling being a mom it's incredibly yeah. fulfilling yeah. the yogic path magnificent i recommend it but it's not for me anymore please don't make me come back and do it again <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my work. I'm willing to do my work. I'm enjoying it. I love helping others, you know, my students, even my family when they want to hear. My children have gone 180 degrees from, you know, laughing to, ah, there's something to that. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. It's That's great. amazing. It's so good. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I'm not coming back here again. I've already decided. I'm done. <laughs> I've had enough lifetimes on this planet. <laughs> I'm ready to move it to something different. Work. Exactly. But I'd like to hear a few words uh, about your childhood experience. I did uh, watch you in a video with Jill, but I'd like to hear from your voice. Yeah, how that was. Do you feel like it? Sure. Just I a can, few. Yeah, I can share it again. It was... Um, and you're speaking of my experience with the universal beings or extraterrestrials as yeah. they're commonly yeah, yeah. known. I just exactly. pick that other term exactly. for them because I like it better. Um, but any rate, I, I was probably about somewhere between seven and eight years old. I don't remember exactly. And we lived in um, an upstairs apartment on the end in um, on MacDill Air Force Base here in, in Tampa, Florida. And 
And it's so interesting to me because since then I've listened to people who, who talk about this type of, you know, stuff a lot. They're really involved in it and they're really knowledgeable about it. And they talk about McDill Air Force Base a lot as being one of the bases where a lot of this stuff has happened. So I found that interesting because I didn't know that previously. It, no. um, I just learned that in the last few months. I know their military bases were, you know, like maybe military and government have interacted with extraterrestrials. Hush, hush. Yeah. Finally, they're coming telling us, yes, there are UFOs. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> we have been looking at <laughs> I have never seen one. Right. But I, so, I went to, I went to bed one night, you know, as a, you know, as a little girl and what's so interesting to me is the different perspectives of this experience, because when I was being taken from my bedroom out of the apartment, it was almost like I was looking at it out of body. It was like, I was looking at it from up here and I was watching myself being taken out of the apartment. Now the perspective changes when I get outside and I'm looking at this spacecraft that's kind of shaped like like a like a kind of flattened out diamond shape, I guess. And it had a, a door on it that was um, came from the top down, from the middle, not the top top, but the middle of the craft down, so that it created kind of a ramp. And I was taken into the spacecraft. And I don't remember what the beings look like. So I'm not going to say that I remember what they look like because I don't. I just remember them not being. I'm only wiped your memory because I remember also going through walls, but I don't remember what happened next. Right. Yeah. So I think this technology, they wipe your memory for comfort so they don't traumatize you. The good ones, the bad right. ones, they don't care how they traumatize you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the next thing I remember, I was laying on a table inside of the spacecraft with these beings above me walking, you know, moving around above me and they were doing things to me. I remember that they were doing things, but I don't remember what they were doing. Nothing was painful to me except, or, or I don't remember anything being painful, except when they messed with my left calf about halfway between my knee and my ankle on the interior portion of my leg. So think if you're having your feet together, it would be, you know, like on, on the inside where your legs were closer together. And whatever they did right there in my leg was very, very painful. And I remember when I woke up the next morning, I looked at my leg to see if there was a mark on it because it hurt so bad that I was in my little girl mind. I was thinking I have to have a mark on my leg because it hurts so bad. How could there not be a mark? But there was no mark. And that's all I remember. There, there just was no mark on my leg. You think they, they could have put an implant or something? I mean, it's possible. I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, 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 I don't I, I don't remember any more than what I just said. Maybe you can look into it um, and see what what seems right, right? Yeah, and so, I did. Yeah. I, I do have a friend who does Reiki, and she scanned that area of my leg, and she said she did feel a difference in the energy in that part of my leg compared to the other parts of my leg. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying there is. I'm not saying there isn't but it definitely was a very painful experience. You walk, you walk fine. I walk right? fine. Yeah. No problem. You run maybe. Yeah. So, um, well, maybe they did, they helped you heal something. We don't know. It could be bad. Or it could be good. Right. <laughs> like, for example, I remember once I felt pain here in the sinuses, really painful. But actually the next day I didn't have these chronic colds I was getting. Right. So maybe somebody helped me. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We're not and I've had experiences to... like that too, not not any kind of spacecraft involvement or anything, but I have had pains like that too, where it's like, oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. And then later on it's like, oh my gosh, I feel better now, like in a joint or yeah. something like that. You know, it's it's very bizarre. Yes. So I'm lucky because I've never been prone to nightmares. 
So I believe I've not had anything too trauma traumatic, you know, with these beings or whatever they were doing. But there was a time I lived by the river, uh, not too many years ago, maybe 10, 10 15 years ago. Uh, well, probably late, right? Probably. Are we late? You're fine. Do we yeah, have go ahead. No, you're fine. Go ahead. So I lived by this river, and at night it was a sound the light show constantly <laughs> like i would go to at that time i lived in india so i would come back maybe for a few months and then go back so i believe when you study uh, and go to all these vortexes where the energy is very high for some reason you become more sensitive and intuitive especially if you have always been right so it your senses are enhanced. Also, yoga makes you very intuitive. And um, we have neurons all over the body, of course, but we become more self-aware and we become, everything becomes more sensitive. So I would notice that I would wake up in the middle of the night and there was so much light in the room. And then like a minute later, I would hear all these military planes. So mm -hmm. what I learned from watching videos on YouTube, like nothing special, or on Gaia TV. The people who have, have had all these experiences, they say the first they get in touch with these higher beings, Andromedans, Arcturians, Pleiadians, all kinds of um, groups. And then the militaries come to chase these uh, uh, spaceships, probably. So I felt that I was having experiences. I was super psychic at that time. Literally, I knew things ahead of time. I would have visions. I would tell people, look, this is going to happen. You did this yesterday. It was all true. Some people were spooked out. Or some people loved it. They were like, oh, tell me more. Yeah. And they wanted to use me as a psychic. And I said, no, I'm not a psychic. I prefer astrology. <laughs> but anyway, I believe that when you're in touch with higher cosmic beings, you become more in, more intuitive. And all this military, and I was so upset with these military planes because they would wake me up in the middle of the night because I didn't remember anything else. I could just, why do they fly on my roof every night? That was my question. We are in a residential area where there were houses and why do they do that? So I never understood. And then I, now that I know a little more about these things, I thought, oh, wow, they were just chasing these spaceships. Because the light, I, sometimes I would hear like a sibilant, you know, a sibilant sound, like it's, like it's very soft like that. And then a minute or two later, all these complaints, like these sounds of, I live um, not too far from this uh, military academy. Uh, and uh, there are so many sometimes planes, like I can tell the difference between, you know, airliners and also there were no airliners on the Hudson River. So I know there were military planes. So, And so I realized, oh, something is happening. And one morning I woke up and I said to myself, I am Pleiadian. And I thought, what? Why am I saying that? What does that mean? What does it mean, Pleiadian? I had to do a search. I was that innocent. I knew nothing about these things. And then after doing some search, oh, there's a player, this star cluster. Then, then years later, my mentor started to talk about the Pleiadians who came to uh, the earth plane and they settled in Tamil Nadu, uh, the south of India. And then I started to do more research and there, you know, the higher beings and from there, I was curious. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember, oh yeah, I did have uh, experience with this tall blonde guy when I was, you know, like, I saw him, he looked like, like, you know, Michelangelo, all the muscles, mm -hmm. you know, like, what do males, oh my goodness, my gardeners are, anyway, so, you know, like Michelangelo male statues, like mm -hmm. the, all the muscles, I, I thought it was just like, uh, just like a Michelangelo, but he was dressed and he was wearing um, a, like a scuba diving suit made of a be golden beige. And he was very handsome. He looked like an angel. He had curls and blonde, very, very blonde. And then he was in my room and then I freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe they wipe us so we don't get scared. So that's it. But that time I remember.
<laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. I've seen spirit since I was a little girl. So I think if one showed up at somebody showed up in my room, I would just think that, you know, like it would just be. Hi. No, but I never, <laughs> I did. I wasn't aware of spirits. I felt energy. I could read the thoughts of other people. I, I, I thought it was normal. When yeah. I asked my friends, I said, what are you talking about? No, I don't. And I was surprised. But a lot of children have experiences that other children don't have. Yeah. Right? Uri Geller, you know Uri Geller? You've heard about Uri Geller? I don't think so. He was, he was a psychic. He was also worked with, uh, like, you know, like a CIA, all those three letter agencies, because he's very psychic and did remote viewing for them. Yeah. And he said when he was five, he was in the garden playing, and there was a orb of light and the beam from this orb of light went and hit him right here on the third eye <laughs> can you hear i heard the garden. a little bit of something not not too much yeah, it wasn't planned. they were supposed to come tomorrow all right so it was it and from that moment on the metal would melt in his hands any new things and so i think that Sometimes we are awakened by yeah. higher beings. Yeah. To do some work and change the narrative. And, you know, maybe it's controversial for some, but for most people, it's okay and interesting. Yeah. It is interesting. I find it fascinating. I love these conversations because I've, I'm just, I've had so many experiences of my own that it's really cool to sit down and talk to people who have experiences also. And, you know, it's a normal conversation to them, you know, instead of it, it being something so far out there, but, you know, cause I, I actually just, it's so interesting. You mentioned an orb cause I just saw an orb for the first time in a while while I was sitting at the table the other day and oh, it, um, your you house. Got some your house? yes, it floated across the room oh. in front of me like that. And it was Perfect. probably about the size oh of a, God. so, well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us today before we close out uh so again the launch is on may 22nd so what why do i want the spiritual community to help because we have authors of other topics that have million dollar marketing teams behind yeah. i personally don't don't so other people uh i'm willing to help the spiritual community i've always felt that we need to help each other because we're not spending millions of dollars for our marketing and book tours. So why not, right, right. to exchange? Buy your books. Absolutely. Tell me um, what the titles. I'd be happy to contribute. Yeah. And um, also, I'd love to. I, I'm actually writing a book right now, but it's it's not not finished yet. I only have the first two chapters written. So, but... You'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that as I as I get more finished and and I have some other things in the works right now too that I'm not talking about because I feel excuse me I feel like um, energetically those things need to be kept a little quiet right now but I have some really cool things that I feel like are happening well I know so they're when happening you're, yeah so those will come out I believe, I believe that you will be starting to do more work like work on your movie and uh, also your new book. We need this and we need the more spiritual people to have courage. And, and you know, we're so self-conscious sometimes because we're gentler, purer people, I believe. Yeah. You know, we're not pumped up by some, I don't know, big corporations. Then. Right. And we're just working for the light. So definitely we need more courage and more empowerment. Um, and I absolutely. wish it to you wish you lots of success thank you and i wish you lots of success too and it's already happening as evidenced by your previous statement about you being ahead of <laughs> the the big guys right the point was that without any marketing um when something is energy that can help others i believe it then there is a little bit of a divine wind yes. <laughs> behind Oh, absolutely. I totally agree with you. So, and you'll send me your links and I'll put them in the description box below the video here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way mm -hmm. everybody can find you quickly and easily. And uh, 
Thank you so much. I enjoyed You're very it so welcome. Much. I enjoyed it also. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I'm going to close this out for today. And thank you everyone for watching. I'm sure you enjoyed this conversation as much as we enjoyed having it together today. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can get this message out to all of the people who need to hear it. Thank you so much again. And as always, I love you all. See you on the next one. Thank you.